What's what's this I feel? Mm. Oh wait a second. Wait, I shouldn't be playing this. This is probably pretty bad. I'm probably gonna get monetized. I don't know. I'm probably gonna get sunk anyway. So I don't know. Maybe I'll make a couple versions, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. So there we go. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Change the volume a little bit. Hello, folks. Welcome back for I am the one, the exhausted Hobo Tom. There we go. I'll center myself. Yeah, so we heard a little music there. wonder why. I know why. Because I was happy. Because, well, yeah. My bullet club shirt on. I had to change shirts. The other one's just funky feeling. Yes. As this video suggests, I made it to AEW Live. The last homecoming show up in Jacksonville, Florida. And by the way, I have a lot of work. Because I have a lot of video editing to do. And I have to make sure that my cell phone is, for the most part, fully charged up. Yes. So, I have my notes. And you're going to see some video. So we're going to see stuff. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can understand some of my handwriting. Oh, yeah. So here, let me start off. Oh. Oh, oh that hurt. From all that delicious garlic. And so, of course, Lord Hobo Life Sessions IPA. Amazing stuff. And a decent price, too. Stuff I like to... Whoa. That was funky to clean that off. Let's see, a little news and notes here. Um, I'll tell you what. I have mixed feelings about the show. And I'll express that as the show goes on. Uh, to begin with, I can't believe I left work at 5.30 here in Daytona Beach. And I actually made it to Jacksonville. I got to a free parking spot. So parking is free. That is very good and very important. Or at least they didn't bother to check to see if I was supposed to be there. Because I parked kind of further away. And I don't care. I didn't get a ticket. I didn't get a foot on my vehicle. I'm happy. The parking was free. Um... If I had to pay $29 at the gate, I would have been happier, even if they tack on. Sometimes they have, like, stadium fees. And at most, it's only going to be, like, an extra 4 or $5. So, say $35. I would have been really happy, especially if I had the physical ticket that I could put on the door of wrestling as a free souvenir. I don't even think I had souvenirs. Oh, I think about it. I just... Said, I just want to do this, get this done for you, my wrestling fan audience, and for myself because I just needed to go out to a live event. Um, for forty bucks, after fees, it honestly does make me pause and think think about go going and or not going on. Um, during the uh, new year, when they come back again. Free parking is always good, though. I can't complain about that. Um, my truck was still there. Pretty good. Something about a helicopter DDT. I'll, oh, I'll tell you what. Those bathrooms suck. The one, I think, in the one bathroom, all three urinals were backed up. I don't know if it was the water pipes were bad. Um, someone did something incredibly stupid. They didn't clean out the, the wasps that make their nests in there. I don't know. And I don't mean just in the bathroom. I mean, like, in the urinal. Like, hiding. Because they were backed up. You kind of had to, like, wash your stream and make sure it didn't, like, spill over. Because that would... 
be bad. Yeah. The bathrooms suck, though. Um, oh, and I'll tell you what. You're going to see a video of, of some of these. I'll call them ladies for right now. But yeah. Someone forked out. Well, something. And it's probably got, got a lot more like disease or something afterwards but yeah some of those <coughs> ladies yeah yeah you just saw it there folks I'm sorry I had a camera body parts looked fake and or highlighted so yeah that's what you get for going out in public like that i don't care um yeah there's gonna be a lot of that every so often especially later um during the one match it was just dolls like geez these women are more interesting to start than some of the matches which probably isn't good but let's see here so I, I, the only, my only other rant and rave I will have was really the security. The fact that you didn't have a paper ticket, I had to put my cell phone down. That got wet. Or I don't know what happened. I went to, or actually went to screensaver. They wouldn't accept the Q code for the ticket. They needed the scan bar. So I had to go back into my email. And I'm standing out there for 20 minutes in the freaking rain trying to figure out. And I'm like, why the hell doesn't this, this Q code work for everything else? I mean, you go to some restaurants and they're all Q carded. And I'm like, Q, and I'm, like I'm not happy. Crush. Rage. Hobo. Rage. But yeah, they had the metal detectors. Um, they didn't take my hat, which had all the stuff, which had all the stuff in it. They're like... I'll just leave the hat there. They kind of poked around and like they're like whatever. But yeah, <laughs> Felix, they had my my spare battery in my wallet. So that was good. I'll tell you what, I almost used that battery on some idiot fan. But yeah, um, I guess that was my only other complaint. Is and I don't blame the wrestling. I almost want to blame the alcohol served and the lack of a limit. Some of those fans really don't know how to behave. Most, I'll, and again, it's, it probably was because it probably was because one one kid behind me just kept on kicking the chair and was like, "I'm looking around. I'm like, this this place is not full." Oh yeah, the play the stadium was not full by the way. So I still had pick of seats and I eventually moved around a little bit too especially towards the end of the matches and um with that being said unless you were like trying to do something stupid going into like either the hard camera area or the front row without a special pass or try to get into a section where where you really had like pay the money to get into um security didn't care like I could have sat there and videotaped the whole thing That'd be wrong, though. I'm not a video pirate. Just a hobo. Even though I, I do wear... Support the Skull and Crossbones, though. Or the Skull and Cross AKs. Well, that's what they are. Wow, is that what came out of my nose? Oh, no, that was from dinner. Are those AKs? Yeah, because they have the very traditional curved magazine. I just realized that. Yeah, see... Curved magazines. Or actually, yeah, there was a curvature. I know something about guns. My friend Dan will be happy with me. Security was non existent. Um, the fans were okay. That one idiot fan I almost wanted to throw my battery at, though. I know you're, ex listen, I know you're excited, but act like you've been there before. Act like, to quote Jim Cornette, act like you've been out of your mother's basement before. So yeah, 
Um, they they were probably just as cooped up, and probably didn't even have jobs, and they got lucky, and they bought money for tickets. Who knows? Because it was an amphitheater, there was actually a leak. And if you were in the seat that was right above the one leak, man, I would have been so peeved off. Because all it did was rain. And you could feel the rain. And maybe that contributed some things. I'll get into the specifics, though. Uh, so those were, so you probably saw some of the videos. Or that previous show, oh, those ladies, yeah, loosely called ladies, by the way, or ladies, more likely ladies of the night, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it was a much different crowd than I remembered, a lot shadier crowd, and listen, I know there was the whole thing with Domino's wanting to pull a sponsorship because they had, because Nick Gage used a pizza cutter right during the picture in picture of Domino's slicing up pizza with a pizza cutter. When Domino's was slicing up pizza with a pizza cutter, Nick Gage was slicing up Chris Jericho's forehead with a pizza cutter. You don't have to be the one fan to let everyone know. But yeah, PBR is going to take their spot. I've had PBR. Um, it is definitely not a Lord Hobo Life Session IPA. It's not. I do like the American Pale Ale by PBR is actually pretty good. But just traditional PBR... It's not as bad as what people say it is. It's not necessarily terrific either. To me, it's it's that nostalgic beer that's, to me, right with like the Miller High Life and Coors Light. I don't know what it is about Budweiser. I just don't like Budweiser or Bud Light. It's it's like right there, though, with the, with the Miller's. And Coors, definitely above Keystone. Not something necessarily you want to brag about drinking a lot. Um, especially if you're not from the Midwest, it's a very, it's a, it's a very Midwest, very Midwest, um, North Atlantic beer, I guess. Again, when you have access and can afford. Lord Hobo beer. PBR, meh. So yeah, um, it was interesting to talk to talk about him. Um, we talked about a couple of things, mainly what happened if you heard da 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 da, -da, -da. cult of personality. Um, don't necessarily go around the stadium chanting yes, because a lot of people that probably go to AEW have no clue who Brian Danielson is. Or Daniel Bryanson. The yes. Yes. 
Yes, movement. Um, Bray Wyatt was probably too early. But yeah, like if Cult of Personality hit the place, would have. I don't know. It might have burned as far as I know. With some of those people there. I don't know. Some of those women might have thrown their, their bras at him. Who knows? Ladies of the night. Yes. I have to correct myself now. Being nice is all over with. So yeah, so that's kind of my oh oh whoa, that took fourteen minutes. I only showed one video. That's terrible. Um, so let's see, let's get into some wrestling. Um, again, I showed up a little bit late, dealing with all the security stuff, trying to find my ticket on phone. I just like my solid paper ticket. Paper works always. Um, after I got in, I got my seat. I saw the Lucha Brothers versus man. Nah. Jobbers. And geez, editing this is going to be such a pain in the ass. I might do that tomorrow, actually. Yeah, I might delay this. Only because it just has so much freaking work to do. If I made this video, actually, and I should wake up tomorrow morning. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe Friday this will go up. That sounds like a plan. Uh, it, was, it was a fun match. Um, a, fl a flippy stuff, very typical Lucha action. Again, great Lucha action. I don't know what people have against it. Oh, and by the way, Triple Mania is coming up soon. So I have to make a video. I have to contact my good friend El Sicario and El Vagabundo Hobo. I don't know, 57, whatever he's called. See if they're going to do a predictions video. I should actually do that. Um, oh, yeah, Monday I'm off, too. Sweet. Actually, you know what? Because I'm wearing a Blood Club shirt. It's too sweet for... Bye. Oh, yeah, and by the way, I found out that, that too sweeting... Actually, the two counts, like, no longer a thing, which sucks. Although people do like to chant, this is awesome, for, like, yay boo chants. I, I, I don't know. I personally blame the fans there. But, yeah, um, so this match, you know, it's fast-paced, good double teamwork. Um, doing the stuff was, was good. It was crisp. Phoenix was so flippy. It's, it was just fun to watch.
Eventually, the engine with a spray packaged pile driver. That was good. You know what? Lucha Brothers won, as they should. Solid cheeseburger match. Can't complain whatsoever. And then again, to some of the specifics of the show, please do not throw the batteries, do not enter the ring, do not start fights in the crowd. Oh, that would have been kind of interesting. Um, I was up there in the hobo section. It was kind of interesting because you could definitely tell who the noisy people were. And they were all in the front for some reason. Like, where I was, besides the freaking idiot with the Domino's box with PBR written on it. I don't know why. Um, a few other people. I'll tell you what, it was relatively quiet up in the hobo section, which I guess was good. The front section was definitely a lot louder. And that was pretty fun. So, the show starts off right before uh, QT Marshall gets on. He talks trash about, of course, Jackson and the Jaguars, how he's going to apologize. Yeah, you get the introduction. <laughs>
announced team. Um, I probably botched that video here somewhere. Uh, Tony Khan then comes out, thanks the crowd for being there. And then of course goes to the announcer, and we're gonna be live in three minutes. And they're giving us more stage commands. So yep. Yeah, so I shall pause this video here. And then we can talk more about the show proper. So it starts with the introduction. And again, it's fun in the opening match. I can't believe they opened with this match. They opened with the um, Chris Jericho, um, Herculean Tasks. Uh, it was Juventud Guerrero versus Chris Jericho. sing for Chris Jericho. Everyone wanted to stand up and sing for Chris Jericho. Man, I'm getting old. I just wanted to sit down and tranquilo. But yeah, um, and Huvatid Guerrero came out, came out. He looked amazing. Um, this match was okay. Uh, I'll say this. This is directly from my notes. This match 20 years ago was fun. However, that was 20 years ago. They got a little old. Uh, Chris Jericho really caught Juventud Guerrero. You could tell him that. Juventud Guerrero still can fly, though. Not like 20 years ago, though. It just seemed... And this was awesome 20 years ago. It was kind of a solid match. 
Of course, they'd go to the rest holes, the chops, and the leg sweeps were always fun. Stands. Um, and I probably got a video of this. They still were not full, and they did have tarps on areas. They had the entire two tiers still open. I don't know if there just wasn't a ticket demand, or what. Uh, again, Chris, uh, Jericho goes for the massive very heel thing. Uh, Hoovitude. something great um Chris Jericho did hit one flying splash remember he had to win by a top rope maneuver he, he tried for one that was great to see then he hit a flying Judas effect good spot you know I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade it yeah it's too harsh um you know what I'll say it was a solid cheeseburger match When Wardlow came out, he jumped Chris Jericho. And the next match Chris Jericho is going to have is going to be against Wardlow. There's some other stipulation involved. Oh, yeah, and MJF is probably going to be the referee.
was an interview with Muerte de la Triangular and El Hilo. And that was pretty good. And the only thing is that it was on the big screen and the, the seat I have didn't necessarily have the best view of it. It was blocked a little bit as you could tell a little bit by the videos. Then they had the Dark Order promo. Meh. It was pretty good. Now I'll tell you what, a match that I could probably have cared less about was actually fairly decent. 2.0 is back wrestling. Um, they, they got cut by NXT, which was too bad because it was, it was during kind of a pretty good revisionist period when they started to do some good comedy stuff. Um, as Ever Rise, then they had their morning talk show, Ever Rise. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so 2.0 is back. They had someone else on the team. I don't know who he was. I didn't catch his name. And granted, I don't know everyone on the roster. Care, care less, really. Um, it was taking on Darby. I only got a big pop. He has very weird cartoonish um, cut man like graphics. I never I never really saw the graphics before. I'm like, that looks like a cut man animation of him like, on a skateboard. Like, uh, it was a cross between Cupman, Paperboy, and Darby Allen, I guess. John Moxley, which they overpronounced too much, and Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston probably got the biggest pop. I don't know if he's from the area or if he's just from Florida in general. So he got a huge pop. He almost got like a hometown pop. That was good to see. Started off as a clustering wrestling match. Um, 2.0 is still... Oh, wait. Pause.
point in it was still great talkers. I don't care what you say. One of the greatest uh, attributes any wrestler can have is that they actually know how to talk in front of an audience and can talk throughout the match. They're good. They're good at that. Uh, again, the classic wrestling start. It's good to see them then. Uh, however, they're, you know they're going to get stomped on. That's just an instant given. I'm getting good tag team work. I mean, I couldn't complain about that. That was a good deliberate pace. Crowd loved Eddie Kingston. Moxley was on the outside. Um, then, he, then he started to go around the ring. That was kind of cool. And then Moxley hit a paradigm shift and then tagged in Darby Allen for the coffin drop. That was It was fun. Hard to complain about it. And I am going to have to replace this cherry eventually. But that's okay. Well, it's not really that much of a difference. You know, I feel it in my legs more. Because I have to change those videos, but yeah, I have stuff to do. But yeah, solid match. You know what? Cheeseburger match. Then they had a Starks promo. And then, I think the only other issue I had is that you could tell when they were at commercial, especially between segments. Not so much during wrestling matches, but you could tell because it was, it was just like dead and quiet. I think the announcer tried to hype things up by saying, oh, where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, what does that sign say? They... That works at small venues if you're NXT, not so much for this one. And they had a, a thing with the Elite Club. That was okay. No, no. <laughs> Our 
next match was Christian Cage taking on the Blade. Fun match. Uh, Christian jump starts the match. He goes right after the blade. Uh, the bunny gets involved a little bit on the outside. You have the interference from the bunny. That was great. And then Chris Statliner showed up and fought the bunny off. Exit stage left. Uh, from there was a very slow heel pace. Um, then he did the uh, draping suplex over the rope. The blade did that to Christian. Um... And then it was the time for the comeback. Again, the blade, very heel-like movements. Everything he did just said, I am the bad guy. Jacksonville crowd 
And, and I learned that the Jacksonville crowd can count to 15. I guess they're partially educated. Because, again, uh, Christian went up, delivered, like, instead of the 10 punches, 15 punches, and the crowd could count to 15, which I was impressed with. Uh, eventually the blade went for the brass knuckles when the bunny came back out, distracted the referee. But no, as he went to to go, because actually, no, there was a turnbuckle. I think one of them did something to the turnbuckle. Referee was distracted. Uh, he went to go punch Christian Cage. Christian Cage speared him. Solid match. Cheeseburger match. And then again, the only thing I didn't like is when you actually had to watch the Titan Tron because then they had an LAX promo. Problem, powerful, whatever. Uh, Tony was then just in the ring for a very long, awkward time. So he was in the ring and El Idolo had a promo backstage with Fuego Del Sol. And Chavo told him, like, hey, Fuego Del Sol, t t time to shine the shoes, buddy. Yeah, you know why you're here. This is what you're getting paid for, not to hang out. With Triangular de Muerta. It seems that one day Pax there, the other day the Lucha brothers are there. So yeah. And Andrade El Idolo and Chavo are getting them plane tickets and limousines. Hmm. Sounds fishy to me. But yeah. Um, then the Hangman Adam Page comes to the ring.
Dark Order doesn't go because they because Adam Page said no. Listen, I have to deal with these guys, these morons myself. Um, I don't like the Young Bucks goofy attire. I don't know, they just look goofy. And Kenny Omega has to get rid of the mutton chops. He looks like some washed up '60s hockey player that wasn't any good. Not even a goon, just. Couldn't even skate on ice, which is bad because he's from Canada. So skating should be like second nature to him. Um, then our next match it was Lee Johnson versus Rusev Day. No, I mean Miro. <laughs>
Uh, that was pretty good. Again, the, the two kicks, the one punch. Again, Miro very strong. Uh, the shoulder, however, he did post himself, which is becoming a trope now. Um, Lee tried every time he would hit Miro for a little bit. It just seemed that it would annoy Miro more. And the crowd just honestly seems to like Miro better. Um, you had Dustin Reynolds outside. It's kind of like the ring man. Again, Miro's just so heavy-handed. Um, he did the bear hug. He even no-sold a DDT. sell moves the DDT is not necessarily a move to no sell because that's just look like a, a plain up screw up uh, Lee the, the a f little flippy stuff there um, and then I'm thinking I'm like okay this match is getting long because you know Lee's he's good but he's not taking that belt off Miro and um, and I'll tell you what, I don't know what happened, but I just, I think I was writing on something and it looked and leaded something off like the top rope and Miro shoved him off. And I'm just like, I almost thought we saw someone break himself. Like that was kind of the, oh, oh shoot moment. But eventually Miro Machka kicked Lee, put him in the accolade, which is absolutely horrible looking because he brings him all the way back. 
You're taking all the tension off the spine when you're not sitting on him. You're just stretching his, his quads. And I'm sure as a wrestler, he has probably very stretchable quads. So yeah, man, it was okay. Well, yeah, a ham sandwich of a match. Then we had Layla Hirsch versus the Bunny. the low point of the match this at this part I just like started to find like better seats um, and then there was like gang it was gang warfare because Layla Hirsch came out with best friends Orange Cassidy and Chris Statlander and someone else I forget who Bunny came out with uh, the Hardy family office um, the butcher the blade came out um, private party came out. I don't think Matt Hardy showed. I don't, I don't think Matt Hardy was there though. Maybe it was um the hybrid two, uh, hybrid two point of Jack Evans, and then Helico. I don't know. I just think they were like, it just seemed to be like a lumberjack match. It was weird. Again, very lumberjack style match for some reason. Um, kind of some striking. Layla Hirsch is good at her grappling stuff. I'll give her that. Ali's pretty good. Uh, classic stuff. Nothing really great to write about. Um, oh, and... Oh, what's her face? From the NWA. Nick Aldis's valet. I forget her name. The one with the blonde hair and the big tits.
wasn't the crack fiend. Was there in attendance? Because I guess she got into uh, Layla Hirsch's face. Um, and I'm like, wait a second, who is that? That, that weird pale purple haired woman with with that blue tank top, blue bra top, with, with, with large bosoms at ringside. It's like, she's going to get tossed. I was thinking, I'm like, this could be interesting. <laughs> We're going to see her get tossed. But no, she was a, a plant. I'll tell you what, AEW, they do have a lot of plants in that crowd too, which is not necessarily good. And you can tell because they're in the crowd and keep, Parts and they're actually talking to and getting to walk through the production area. So again, I'm not I'm not anywhere allowed near the production area. So if someone's getting through the production area, they know someone, and that means they're probably a plant, or they know like the wrestlers, or they just they're one of the ladies of the night. Show them, hey, yeah. Look at these. But yeah. Um, and just let me go through. But yeah. Um, Layla Hirsch wins by Juju Katami. That was good. That was probably the best part of the match. Really a can of soup match. And what's her face comes in now? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, do some research because I still have plenty of time. I know what the temperature is going to be tomorrow. It's going to rain. NWA women's roster. Let's see your computer. Let's see here. Did you mean NWA women's roster? Yes, of course I did. Not, it's not her. C N W A roster. Or N W A. Yeah, I'm not watching that stuff. Garbage stuff. N W A wrestling. Empower. Sports Kedia. There we go. Let's see here. Let's go here. Um, roster. Here's from the 50s, 70s, 2000. 10 pounds of gold, that's Nick Aldis. I don't care about that. Let's see, what's our website? Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. I should have to spell the whole thing out. That's terrible. Yeah, there she is. Wow, her boobies look big, too. Um... Oh. 
news. Let's see here. Back for the attack. Don't even care about that. Oh, that's right. The question mark passed away. That sucked. Um, store. They have NWA globe flip flops. That's horrible. I just want to know who their wrestlers are. There she is. Kylie Ray's back to wrestling? God, what a whore. Oh, wait, I shouldn't say that. That sounds terrible. But yeah, it's her. Whoever Nick Aldis's valet was. And or it is. And I, I remember, but I forget. Only because it was just useless. I just stared at her oh wow and this video is getting long okay so there we go that, that's that's enough research for one night yeah that, that was too time consuming if you guys know out there in the youtube land let me know um yeah again like i said it was a can of soup match whatever then we had malachi black versus cody rhodes
entrances were top tier. Um, it starts off with a great tie up. Again, I love the single leg. I love Cody going to very collegiate style wrestling. To me, that's always great. Um, black hit version of the calf crusher. And I'll tell you what, this was way too quick though. So then um, Cody went flying. He got injured out there somewhere. Worked uh, Malachi Black actually worked over the legs of Cody Rhodes pretty good. He popped out of the crossroads. And then all of a sudden, it was one black mask, and that was it. Build up for Lyra five minute match. Yeah. I'll tell you what. It was a ham sandwich. And then right after the match, a lot of people started to leave. Cody Rhodes gave his little speech. It um, looked like he was going to leave his boots in the ring.
Malachi c comes back, destroys him again, takes his takes his boot for whatever reason, teases throwing the crowd, and then Tony Khan, Tony finally Tony Khan comes out, thanks the crowd. show the end of a tv show there's no dark match i don't know it was just weird um overall you know what i'd say it was a cheeseburger show it's a ham sandwich experience It does make me question if I want to go back to see them or maybe I'm just so used to WWE's presentation and I hate to say it, well, quasi I hate to say it, but their professionalism and the way they do things, I don't know. Uh, so we'll see. So hopefully I'll get things edited. Oh, that's not happening tonight. This video is taking way too long as this. But yeah, um... I'll try and get this stuff edited after work tomorrow. I have a lot of editing to do. I have to go through my notes and figure out what's what. Because I, I haven't done a show like this in a while. And I forgot to take my pause and my station identification breaks. But other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, yell at me for putting this video up late. But you know what? I had to sleep. And I go to work. I need a real job. Go get yourselves a real job. Um, on that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, I'll close it off with this. Next week's going to be pretty busy. Because next Monday night, I go to Monday Night Raw. So again, we'll have another one of these. Hopefully I get my timing done better. Um, hopefully they have more dark matches. Because I'll be able to go there with some time. Um, and then my life sucks. Then I, I think I, I think Tuesday, Wednesday, I wore, I close. Thursday I open 10 to 6.30, so I probably will get to Impact, but I'm going to skip NXT and AEW. And I probably will need the time to work on Raw. Sometime then, oh, I know, going to have... 
Triple Mania predictions! Yes. Um, Triple Mania predictions are always good. Um, they're fun to do. Because you never know what's going to happen for Triple Mania. Friday's going to be SmackDown. Uh, I think I... Oh, I have off that day. Yes, yeah, so I'll be able to do that. And then Saturday, live stream here. The Hope Only Girlfriend channel. I have a watch party. I'm making a taco buffet. All the trimmings. I'm going to make a video for that. I, I should make a video for that. Um, and it'll be a live stream of Triple Mania. Because they don't care. They don't have copyright laws in Mexico. Why is Mexico sounding good? Oh no, they have like really bad people there though. Other than that, you know I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see everyone, well, sometime, eventually. Bye! Remember, be too sweet for life.